Now, having discussed relationship between gender and literary style in translation, now we take a particular example of this relationship from work of one of the masters of English literature, Shakespeare. Shakespeare's play, King Lear. This is a tragedy. The play is a tragedy. The play which ends at some sad incident is called tragedy. Shakespeare, you know, he is known as national poet of Great Britain. He has also written poetry, uh, uh, though he is famous for his plays. This is just to give you a background. This is the main character of this drama, King Lear. This is not original King Lear. I have taken these images from movie of King Lear that is available on YouTube. And if you are interested, you can see this, uh, watch this drama on YouTube. And this is the character who is performing role of King Lear. Gender in this play involves at two points. Relation between husband and wife and relation between father and daughter. That's why we have selected this play. King Lear has three daughters, Ganral, Deegan, and Cordelia. Cordelia is the youngest daughter of the king. Duke of Albany, Duke you can say, a high rank uh, person, uh, a ruler of some small state in that period, a kind of Nawab in our local culture. Albani is name of the state. Duke of Albani is husband of Ganral, she is married and she is eldest daughter of the king. Duke of Carnival is husband of Regan. And King of France is a lover, and later the same person becomes husband of Cordelia, the youngest daughter. Lear is King of Britain and wants to free himself from duties of life. He wants to distribute his uh, kingdom uh, as dowry, Jehis Kitorpe, among his three daughters, so that. As we often have uh, heard our parents saying that, So, same is the case here. The king divides his kingdom among the three daughters. In the opening scene of the play, he asks his daughters to express how much they love him. One who loves most will, guess, uh, will get most. This is his criteria. And he asked them to express their love for father in the open court, Darbar. This is Ganral, again character in the movie of uh, King Lear. When uh, the king asks her, she replies, Sir, I love you more than word can wield the matter. Dearer than eyesight, space and liberty beyond what can be valued, rich or rare. No less than life, with grace, health, beauty, honor. As much as child ever loved, this is short form of ever, ever loved, our father found, my love is unprecedented, matchless. You know, she 
is exaggerating mubalga bhi kar rahi hai a love that makes breath poor and speech unable i can't express my love i love you so much father beyond all manner of so much i love now comes the turn of second daughter regan sir i am made of the self same metal that my sister is i also belong to you of the self same metal that my sister is and prize me at her worth so i am also equal to her in my true heart i find she names my very deed of love only she comes to short that i profess myself an enemy to all other joys i agree with my elder sister whatever she says i agree with that but one thing that she misses is that i profess myself an enemy to all other joys which the most precious square of sense possesses and find i am alone felicitate i feel happiness only in one thing i don't like any other joy of life i i am against all other joys and pleasures of life i am happy in your dear highness love highness your majesty her majesty etc you know uh, we use these expressions to address kings and people of higher status these were her views okay this is the turn of the youngest daughter cordelia here a kind of dialogue is involved between lear and cordelia why because cordelia's answer was totally different from her elder uh, elder sisters what she says lear now your uh, now our joy although our last and least to whose young love the wines of france and milk of burgundy these were two lovers of cordelia they both were interested in cordelia so that's why the king says that uh, to whose young love the wines of france and milk of burgundy uh, these are references to these two different countries strive to be interested they both compete to get her hand what can you say to draw a third more opulent than your sisters express your love so that i can give you more than your elder sisters speak now see what she says cadelia nothing this answer was totally shocking for the king lear nothing will come of nothing again speak again because this answer was quite unexpected of her cordelia says unhappy that i am i cannot heave my heart into my mouth i cannot heave my heart into my mouth i am so shocked that i cannot express my feelings of shock i love your majesty according to my bond according to the norm no more no less i love as much as a daughter is bound to love no more no less no exaggeration zameen asman ke kalabe jo dusri behnon ne milaye usne nahi mila the king could not assess true love of cordelia the king love flattery if you watch the movie you can see this that uh, uh, when the elder sisters expressed their love he was so happy that he kissed them and uh, of instantly allotted areas on the map lying ahead of the king uh, he allotted them territories and states 
and return to their expression of love. But here the case was totally different. The king could not assess true love of Cordelia and banishes her, expels her from the court. But king of France, the lover, marries her and supports in this time of trial. The king is not able to detect greed and deceit of other daughters. Both sisters banish their father. Ultimately, what happens? Those two flatterers, they banish their father from the palace and father dies, in, uh, dies a tragic death. This is the end. From this story, so far we discussed only the expression of love. And uh, we conclude the play has important comments from these answers of the daughters. We get a lot about the relationship between literature and gender. That's why I have selected this. So these things would be discussed in the following module, I mean in module 140.